For a while, the attempt seems just as unsuccessful as last. Just before I slip the sheets under a door, though, I hear the handle rattling. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! The door opens halfway. I quickly try to realize how Hanako's faring. The task made somewhat more difficult by her oversized gown hiding so much of her body. She doesn't look sick, or at least not immediately so. To be honest, I'd have preferred that her expression right now. She looks terribly tired. and appears to be barely acknowledging my presence. Hi, Hanako. Uh, Mattel wanted me to give you these since you weren't in class today. I hold out the loose sheets, which she tentatively takes in her hands. The way she moves is devoid of her thought. Her posture is slumped in an unusual manner for someone that's so often tense and wound up. Even her eyes keep looking away from mine. Doing the best to avoid eye contact, I move my head a little to try and get a better look. Like a pervert. But she just ends up turning away. Are, are you okay? If you're feeling sick, I can go get a nurse. It feels almost pitiful to put on such a routine, get well soon act. Can't think of anything else I could possibly do for her, though. Leave her alone, man. Leave her alone. She seems to collect herself a little at notion, but only a little. Her head remains turned away, but her eyes move towards me. I'm fine. An awkward silence follows that thoughtless saying. As it lingers, I notice that she sleeves and cuts off. Wait, wait, what? I notice that the sleeves and the cuffs of her gown barely, barely slightly damp stains. Her cheeks are a bit red, too. Has she been crying? I see. I hesitate a little bit before coming out with the words I really came here to say. Would you like me to stay? I don't have anything urgent to sell you and my man! I don't have anything urgent to do at the moment, so I wouldn't be any trouble. Her eyes side away from me. I lose any hope for improvement of her mood. I wait for her response, but she doesn't say anything. Or give any kind of gesture. She just stands there, looking away from me. Hanako? Hello? Uh, hello? She slowly shakes her head. Okay. Uh, good night then. I'm, I'm gonna go after being turned down. Goddamn. Damn. So much for devious thoughts. With that, Hanako steps back and closes the door without a second word. Looks like I just got... Burned. <laughs> Oh, God. At least me and Hanako have something in common now. More than a little worried, I retreat back to my room. <laughs> Wandering up the hallway, I keep mulling over what happened. I felt like Hanako was only half there, as I was interacting with the robot, just doing what it was programmed to do without any real thought. She was a husk of a person. This is frustrating. No, you don't say. You don't say, Sal. I'd hoped that meeting Hanako would help the situation, but I feel like it only made her harder to understand. How am I supposed to try and help her when she quite literally shuts me out like this? Because she is a different person, man. You gotta do different things, you know? Different ways to try and approach her. Unless she's gonna come sneaking in your room at night, which I completely fucking doubt. You're screwed. So, work on it. Good thing I'm not you, because I'd be up shit's creek. I don't even bother turning the light. I don't think instead of simply changing my pajamas, quickly choke down my evening pills and collapse into my bed. I'm saddened by this. <sighs> do, 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 Katawa, Shohoj. I can't even be happy. This one ended on a fucking sad note. No singing now. No singing. Oh, man. Once again, Hanako doesn't turn off for class. Try as might to concentrate on other matters, this fact continues to distract me throughout the entire school day, even as I walk through the school gardens to the dormitories. I don't think today being her birthday is a coincidence either. I don't know the link between the two events, though, nor do I have any idea how she's feeling. Were it a physical pain, I could at least provide some limited comfort, like Icy Hot, or some Bengay. With something like this, though, I have no idea where to start. I run the people I know through my head, thinking about whether they could help. Shizune and Misha don't know much about Hanako. And what little do they know, they can't help me. Same for the nurse. In the end, there's only one person that knows Hanako well and will be willing to tell me anything. Patel. Kenji. Lily. All of them. Entering my dormitory room, I notice something that takes me off guard. It's starting to feel familiar. With everything that's going on around me, I'm thankful that room started to finally be somewhere I can relax a little. When I first entered Yamaku, it felt immediately far in every way, from the untouched neatness of the way it smelled. I gotta get that. You, you know, if you, if you go to a room that you're used to and you're familiar, and that's your sanctuary, if you want to call it a sanctuary, it provides a sign of relief. It provides a bit of, hey, this is okay. This is cool because this is, this is my comfort zone and everything's okay here. So I understand what he's saying. Although, it can be frustrating when you go to a new place and that's supposed to be your sanctuary and you're gonna make it your sanctuary. Still, makes sense. Focusing back on the task at hand because I like to ramble, I throw my book onto the, I throw my bag onto the bed as I open up the top drawer of my desk. Before she left, Lily told me the number to call her on while in Scotland, and I wrote it down. In hindsight, I wonder if she knew something like this could happen. Now that she's out of reach, I realize how much both Hanako and I have relied on her for guidance. I dig around drawer after drawer looking at the, for the damn piece of paper. Eventually, thankfully, I found it nestled in her borrowed library book. Do you think it's really appropriate to call Lily? I mean, Hanako really hasn't done anything out of the ordinary. She just hasn't really gone to class, which she hasn't done to begin with. So, I don't know if she should be bothering Lily over that. Probably should have just entered it directly into my cell phone, come to think of it. Without further ado, I enter the numbers and anxiously press the call button. Call in England. Scotland. 
All the lids. Eventually the phone picks up. A feminine voice I reckon I don't recognize in there and it's probably Lily's mother. The fuck? Satow? Psh. English. Suddenly find myself unprepared, I realize I can't understand. I understand English! No, fucking put that shit in English. I understand the words she says, either do them my limited vocabulary or her every accent. I should have anticipated this since according to Lily, her mother is a native Scot. I soldier on in the hope that she must know some Japanese, considering it's her daughter's native la native language. I know Japanese? Have I been speaking in Japanese the entire time? Mother of God. I'm good. Um, it's Hasao Nakai speaking in Japanese. An enthusiastic sound of realization can be heard when she recognizes the language. My feeling of relief is immense. Ah, you must be one of Lily's friends from school, correct? Oh, God. Even so, even so, her accent means I have to concentrate to work out what she's saying. Hey! We fucking speak English! You can understand my accent. Yeah, that, that's right. Pleased to speak to you, Miss Satow. It's so nice of her to find someone so polite. Lily, dear, it's for you. Mother seems nice, a little over-enthusiastic given the mundane situation. There's a small silence as Lily takes her time getting the phone. In the distance, I can just make out her mother scolding her playfully for getting up. Hello? Lily speaking? You sound awful. She makes a sound somewhere between a dying animal and a yawn. One thing I did remember to check before calling was the time zone. It's pretty late in the morning over there, so she really has no excuse. Not feeling well. Just tired. What time is it there? Late afternoon. School finished the day not long ago. Hanako's not well, is she? That was... that was fucking quick. Maybe she knows that this phone's only for, like, shitty emergencies only. My assumption is that she must have known something like this could happen. And she seems to be on the mark. How did you know? Because today is her birthday. I hope that she might have gotten at least a little better after coming to know you, but... How is she right now? Well, she missed school today and yesterday. I still have to check up on her today. To be honest, after seeing how she was after I talked to her yesterday, I'm pretty anxious. I really have no idea what to make of it. Has this happened in the past? Is it related to her scarring in some way? Unfortunately so. Roughly the same time, the same thing happened last year when her birthday came up. As far as I can tell, it's because her parents died in the accident that caused her scarring, and Hanako blames herself for this. I knew it! She fucking killed her family! Crazy bitch, kleptomaniac, can't trust her. Pyro. What she says, she does seem to make sense. If she's blaming herself on her birthday, she may well be ruining, ruining that she was ever born. Hanako had mentioned her staying in the orphanage to me. Maybe she takes some heart that she'd trust me well enough to tell me such a thing. Lily seeming to me ah, Lily seeming so in the dark about it though, almost to the extent that I am. It's a surprise. So that's why she lives in the student dormitories as well? Has she told you any more about the accident? As close as we come, she's barely told me anything about what happened. What I know is largely conjecture. <laughs> God damn. She's I'm not I'm not shitting it here, that was a fake tear. The other tear back a couple parts ago is a real tear. She sounds depressed, almost defeated. Considering the trauma Hanako must have gone through, I really can't fault Lily for not knowing. Nevertheless, she still seems really she still seems to consider it's a personal failing. Don't blame yourself, Lily. With everything she's gone through, you can't fix a broken watch. She's a time bomb waiting to go off. There's a long silence on the other end of the line. I begin to wonder if the call cut out before the voice at the other end speaks once again. There is another person. Though this has been a subject of worries for me as of late. Oh! I wonder who the other person is. Who the hell else could she have confided in? Don't say Kenji. Friends are the people she could be talking about in my head. The only friends she seems to keep closer are Hanako and I. There is Akira as well. That person is you, as hell. <gasps> Mother of God! There's not a silence online, but this time it's caused by me. Making others worry about me is something I've actively tried to avoid since coming to Yamaku. Indeed, even my interaction with Nako has helped stave off any major health problems thanks to our relaxed and slow-paced lives, because if I do try and be high-paced, I will either die or, two, she will die. So, that's good to know. Ah, uh, but what is there to worry about over me? I, I apologize. I don't mean any offense. Sorry, I'm just taking a bit off guard. Still, isn't Hanako a bigger problem at the moment? For some time now, I've thought that both of you may be feeding into each other worrying habits. I tried to amend this before leaving, but it seems to have done little. Wor worrying? I'm, I'm not worrying. When I asked you about what you had in mind for the future, your answer was very similar to what Hanako has said in the past when that question was posed to her. Oh, that we don't know? No fucking clue? No, no one does, so don't feel too bad. It's all well and good to want to protect her, but I fear that treating Hanako like this... As if she were a daughter or someone in need of special care, it's only going to achieve the opposite. Fine, then we throw her to the wolves and hope she lives. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh god, I don't remember what the internet said. I don't remember what the internet said. The situation got effectively turned on its head. After everything that's happened, this is the first time I've must, I find myself doubting Lily's judgment. Save game until I fuck up everything. Create a new save file. Continue. Well, you know what? 
Throw it to the wolves. All right, I agree with Lily. I don't want to admit it, but she may have a point. Something else bugs me, though. And, and you tried to amend this? Wait, I'm rattling into the city. Quite astute. I thought that it might help if I drank both of you out of your mako and into the wider world. I'm thankful you become closer for it, though. She noticed that. I suppose she might as well have been paying attention to us since your hearing is incredibly good. Quite likely good enough to have picked up on what we were talking about if she tried. This sounds more and more like you're manipulating us. Sounds the hard way of putting it, harsh way of putting it, but I have no intention of stepping back from those words. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just worried about you. No, god damn it, Lily. God fucking damn it. You were trying to manipulate me. You were doing some mind fucking. I'm not okay with this. Cause I want regular fucking, not this mind fucking bullshit. It's fine. I, I, I guess there are more important things anyway than my pride. It's not at all surprised that she'd do such a thing. Her mother, her motherly nature, can be slightly overbearing at times, but she does have the best of intentions. Ah, so you think I should think about myself more instead of trying to cater to Anako? That largely sums it up. Again, I'm I'm sorry for not telling you this clearer before going behind your back. I know I'm at least as guilty as being overprotective of Anako as you, but I feel that you are neglecting yourself in an effort to give Anako happiness. Do you really think that Hanako will be okay? She isn't as fragile as you think. I don't know exactly what experiences she's lived through or what feelings she has in her mind, but she managed to work her way through them until now. It's also my hope that giving her a little space will allow her to decide that she truly wants for herself and give her the initiative to reach out for it. Please, Hanako, have faith. That's all I ask for. I don't know if I can have faith. I want to try and provide for her. I guess I'll think about it for a while. That's good. Being rash won't get you anywhere. No, I need to go throw her to the wolves now. I know that at times you doubt my your relationship with Hanako, but she does. Lily cuts herself off and takes a moment to reconsider her words. Please keep in mind, I wouldn't have befriended you if I hadn't thought you were a fundamentally good person. Oh, so at least I'm fundamentally good. Not necessarily good. I have all the qualities of a good person, but I may not be good. You're a good friend, both to yourself and Hanako. Th thank you. That helps, I guess. We share some small talk to try and lighten the atmosphere, but it feels very stilted. You say stilted a lot, Hassel. Maybe you like that word. Maybe you're a stilted individual. There's a lot I don't know about Lily's stay in Scotland, but after such a heavy subject, I want to be alone to think about it. And after that, I'm cry. I cry myself to sleep. We end up saying our goodbyes, and I set my phone on my desk. Compared to Hanako's situation, mine feels utterly mundane. I still have both my parents. I had a reasonably normal childhood. Unlike many in Yamaka, my condition isn't immediately visible to the public. But I could die at any given moment, so I don't know what's worse. Public scarring or private death? But then again... Is this just an attempt to justify the way I've acting towards her? That may be well, but we're past her like, but when it comes to the future, I still have no idea what I want to do. In school, I've just concentrated on each day's work, and I've put off mind more and more things to cater to Hanako. I, re I recall the words Tao told me after Hanako's breakdown about the purpose of Yamako and my education. In hindsight, he was probably trying to push exactly the same thing. So everyone knows what to do except for me. That's what I get when I'm being an, a young, uneducated person. I try and do what I think is for the best, but usually someone with more experience really knows what to do. Could save them in the situation as well. Just what I've been doing in the same time. With, uh, just what I've been doing in the time since my heart attack. If I did ever manage to get Hanako out of her room and try and open up, what then? I look at my dormitory windows as the sun slowly sets. It's a nice sight. What I really savor is the quiet as the students return to their dormitory rooms. All I want to do now is think. I'm not sure how much time I have, but I want to work or how, where I'll go from here. Well, that's a little more upbeat, but still not enough to sing. Katawa. Shohojo, Katawa, Shohojo, do do do. Everyone's fucked. Seriously. Forever screwed. Since talking to Lily yesterday, I've wanted to try and move on from the listlessness I've ever felt since coming to Yamaku. But even if I try to concentrate on the book in front of me, Hanako's empty seat is at the back of the classroom long, looms larger than life. Every time I start getting focused, my eyes look at her desk again and my mind starts spinning. Well, then don't be fucking dizzy. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, God! Oh boy, oh, well, lordy, hello, I wonder if this is the person that really can help me get my mind off things, if you know what I mean. Anyway, we gotta call it here for now, because I have things I have to take care of. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next part, where maybe this chick will be able to wander over and, you know, really caress my feelings. Caress my... I gotta go, I have things to do. There's a dog that needs me, and by God, if I let it die, it's going to turn into another Bolshevik. I've killed nine Bolsheviks, motherfucker. I'm really bad at dog keeping. Bye, guys.